Hello guys, I'm Sush. Uh, I'm a search marketing advisor at World Vision Australia. And today on the online prosperity show, I'm going to talk about how you can market your non-for-profit in Australia. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the online prosperity show. And today I've brought you Sush. And Sush happens to be the search marketing advisor for World Vision Australia. Sush, how are you doing, my man? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Well, Fantastic. Well. Now, obviously, the reason why we always bring uh, experts in their own realm is so that they can help you start a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. And in the uh, last couple of years or in the last five years, we've noticed that a lot of people have started becoming social entrepreneurs or starting a non, um, not-for-profit not type of a business. Now, half of the time, not-for-profits are hit with the biggest digital marketing challenge of all. They actually have no money to advertise or to bring out their, um, you know, their help out there to those that are uh, well-deserving. Now, there's bigger... Uh, enterprises like World Vision, UNICEF, Red Cross that already have teams um, that you can also just learn from or copy from and how they are operating and how they're thriving to raise awareness for their causes um, without spending a substantial amount of money um, which makes you know the world bigger and actually uh, a happier existence for those that they are actually helping. Now, Sush, I could go on and on, but you know better um, how these challenges and uh, what it actually entails for not for profit uh, to be in a world where it's impossible to stand out um, because people have deeper pockets, they're bigger, they're louder, and they're financially equipped, um, you know, because they're backed by their profits from their business. Sush, tell me a little bit about your history and how you started um, uh, working as a search um, marketing advisor for World Vision. Sure. So I'm from India. Uh, I'm from the Western part of India. So I grew up in India. Um, I did my bachelor's in computer engineering. After that, I started writing articles on technology, sports, uh, etc. So I worked as a blogger for one year. Um, which is also when I started, you know, dabbling into SEO, search engine optimization. Um, I started watching videos and, you know, um, optimizing websites uh, and also worked on a few clients, um, US clients. Um, and then I came to Australia, Melbourne, to do my master's in business administration and information systems. And the moment I graduated, I joined an app development company as a SEO consultant. I used to write articles on app development, app design. I used to post articles on um, like big websites like Social Media Today. Um, and then I've worked at a couple of agencies um, as an SEO account manager. And now I'm working as a search marketing advisor at World Vision Australia. Absolutely. So it has been, yeah, it has been a gradual move towards um, um, content writing, uh, then to SEO, and then to search marketing. Absolutely, absolutely, and congratulations on all your achievements. It seems like you are an expert in the type of things that you're doing, based on the authority and the content that you've been putting out there. Now, Sush. Just, um, you know, putting it out there and putting the, the, the distinctions that are within the marketing space. Is it easier or is it harder to market a non-for-profit, um, especially when there are people that already have a lot of money um, that are already in the space that are causing a lot of noise? To be honest, um, because we have internet today, which has leveled the playing field, it's not difficult, you know, uh, marketing for non for profits. So you don't need to have a lot of budget to do online marketing. All you need to do is just, you know, get a website up and then, you know, it depends on you, how much you are willing to go, how farther you are willing to go to market your website. So regardless of whether a website or a company is big or small, uh, they have the same set of, you know, feed, uh, you know, resources at their hand. So although like bigger companies do have bigger budgets, it doesn't necessarily has to 
trans translate into an advantage. So smaller companies have the same resources, uh, same advantages as the bigger companies. Absolutely. And um, I really like the term that you brought across, which is leveling the playing field. Um, because a lot of people are advertising their business on Google and using AdWords or a PPC sort of campaign uh, that they can utilize, which means pay per click. Now, I've heard that Google has a grants program, which is basically free money that they give to nonprofits to advertise on the world's largest and effective uh, search engine. Is this something that is applicable to any uh, not-for-profit uh, organization or does it have to be the bigger more reputable ones that uh, google looks after yeah so that is correct um so gratefully so this uh, program grants program is available for all the non-for-profit profits all you need to do is just submit an application and google approves that application which is when you can start you know running ads uh, but there are a few limitations to how you can use that grants account. Like there's like uh, $10,000 in USD, which you get every month, um, which is like 120,000 every year. Uh, but there's uh, limitations as to how much you can bid on a keyword. Like there's a maximum bid per keyword, or uh, it's uh, $2 at the moment. So if uh, there's any popular keyword which costs a lot of money to advertise for it might not be possible but there are other strategies to overcome that so you can definitely use you know a part of that budget if not the entire free budget that you're getting through the grants account plus uh, google also has this um, um, charity matching program so if you are a charity you can partner with google and any money that you raise, Google matches. Uh, Google, um, the employees at Google, um, who are called Googlers, uh, match that uh, charity amount that you raise. So, which is that is amazing. Absolutely, it's really good to uh, see that the big boys are actually giving back, and it actually helps. Um, you know, not for profit or social entrepreneurs that are out there. Uh, that are trying to, um, you know, change the world in, in, in their own little way. Now, as you can notice, Sush, um, there's, there's a lot of video content that happens to be on the internet these days. Some cat videos and, uh, you know, some funny videos from comedians and stuff like that. Now, marketing for not-for-profits requires hitting people uh, on an emotional level. How do you suggest that if a social entrepreneur is going in there, they actually utilize uh, video as a modality to reach out or uh, pass on their message? So video is amongst the most, you know, engaging, you know, mediums to connect with your target audience, um, target demographics, because video drives a lot of engagement, um, especially uh, with uh, YouTube, uh, where people are really engaged. So when um, people are watching YouTube, they are just watching via YouTube. Unlike TV, um, if like people are watching TV, they might also be, you know, surfing on their cell phone, but it's not the same with YouTube. So when people are watching uh, YouTube, they are hundred percent engaged with the particular video. Um, so the best way to, you know, capture, you know, attention of your audience is to, you know, either you, to build a strong connection with them, which you can do through, you know, impact related videos or needs based videos, especially for um, non for profits. So you can tailor your video that shows the impact of the work that you're doing, or you can tailor the video to show that there's need to, you know, raise money for this cause. So these are the two um, main ways you can do it. But it's important to have really powerful imagery, which is key to, you know, engagement for a non-for-profit. Absolutely. Now, when you are on the, you know, uh, internet, there, there are so many uh, competitors that are looking for the attention for the donors. Um, would you suggest that a not-for-profit or a social entrepreneur um, follow a, a budget when they're advertising or should they just hope that people um, would feel emotional uh, and, and share their content without having some sort of outline or a budget or a plan when they're advertising out there? 
I would suggest, you know, plan properly, uh, create a strategy, then plan everything, have a specific budget in mind, and then determine what channels you want going to use for any campaign and uh, work out how those channels are going to, you know, help each other because the channels don't work in isolation, like say Facebook, Google, then native ads, um, display, all of these channels have to work collaboratively. They also have to be in sync. So if a message that you're broadcasting is different on, on Facebook is different to the one that you're broadcasting on Google, it's not going to resonate as much as if the message across all these channels is, is aligned to the same goal. So it's really important to you know, plan everything and think about what you're, pl uh, you're planning to achieve and then visualize how you're going to achieve that. Absolutely. Now, Facebook um, also has uh, something that they use to help not-for-profits and also charitable organization uh, in the form of the Donate Now uh, button. Can you elaborate how people can take advantage of that um, you know, facility in actually getting maybe more donations or people uh, following their causes that they are trying to bring out to the world? Yeah, so Facebook has introduced the donate button, which it still is in its infancy. So it hasn't properly launched in uh, Australia yet, but it's um, very well developed in the US. Again, there's a, a sort of an application process um, and it's pretty easy to, you know, use that donate button. But you have to make sure that you do tests like when it comes to Facebook ads, it's really important that you test the donate button with the right, you know, visuals in the right format because uh, Facebook has a lot of ad formats um, and, and you know testing gives you a proper indication of which format is working for you and then where you can use that donate button but uh, I would definitely recommend using the donate button absolutely one of the uh, you know marketing strategies that is sort of uh, come into play now has been that of influencers um, where um, a charity organization or a, uh, a business or a social entrepreneur can partner with someone um, who also is affiliated to that cause or uh, is impartial to that uh, charity there. How do you uh, maybe suggest that somebody who's starting a, a not-for-profit organization, um, you know, attack this sort of uh, channel of advertising while they need to uh, connect with um, an influencer or somebody of note who already has an audience? So there are a lot of, you know, platforms these days, you know, when it comes to influencer marketing. Um, one platform that I know is really good and it uh, works. Uh, and it also has a lot of, you know, influencers on the platform. It's called Tribe. Um, so basically you can sign up for Tribe. It's like a paid service and you can connect with a range of followers in different niches. Uh, you can select, uh, you can partner to work with an uh, influencer with um, say 10,000 followers on Instagram to 10 million followers on Instagram. So you get the variety and you get the choice of the influencer that you want to work with. Um, and what happens is basically um, that you get in touch with the influencer and you can either supply your content to them or they can create their own content and you can provide your feedback on the content before they post the content. So this way it allows you greater control over what uh, kind of, you know, stuff they post across their channels um, when they are doing sponsored posts. So that works really well. I would suggest, you know, going with uh, the low level, low tier influencers rather than the high tier influencers because um, they don't charge a lot of money. Plus, you know, there's uh, still a lot of engagement um, and you get to, you know, be in front of your audience who are highly engaged with the influencer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, Sush, just in case somebody, you know, is quite intrigued because you have been dropping a lot of value on this show here and they might want to know a few uh, things, how, you know, you might be able to help them out with regards to, um, you know, marketing for non for profits. Is there a way that people can get a hold of you? Definitely. Um, so if you search for my name, um, you can search for Sush, S-U-S-H, Padhe, P-A-D-H-Y-E. 
um, just Google me and you can find my LinkedIn or you can find my Twitter or even my Facebook and happy to help you guys if you can you know, get in touch with me uh, via any of these platforms. Absolutely. And, um, I remember. Uh, yeah, sorry. Also, yeah, sorry. I'll also give out my email address. It's spab6789 at gmail.com. So you can always contact me on my email address. Fantastic. I will definitely put all the details, um, you know, at the bottom just so that people can get a hold of that. Now, obviously, Sush, it's undeniable that, um, you know, somebody who is a social entrepreneur, uh, somebody who is a not-for-profit, they're always crying that they haven't got any money. They don't think they need to be marketing. Um, you know, they're doing something um, for, for the world. So maybe the universe is probably going to give back to them at some point and half of them end up being broke and actually not fulfilling their desire to help out in the world. What sort of last minute advice can you give to somebody who thinks that uh, maybe marketing is not that important just because you are uh, a social entrepreneur and that maybe they feel that marketing is selling themselves, uh, you know, to, to, to the devil, so to speak. Um, I think marketing is really important regardless of what industry you're in. It's like a must these days um, and it's a part of a business strategy and it's the same for any non-for-profit. Um, if you want to, you know, grow your, if you want to get revenue, you need to know, you need to let people know what kind of work you're doing, what kind of positive impact you're having on the people. And the only way to do it is through marketing. Even though you must be doing some amazing work, if people don't know about the work that you're doing, if people don't know about you, they haven't heard about you, they're unlikely to donate. So marketing is really crucial. It's crucial to be in front of your target audience. And it's uh, important to let you know about the quality of work and the great work that you're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have empowered, um, you know, those people that are working in land for profit, um, you know, organizations and also people that are, uh, you know, aspiring to be social entrepreneurs. And if you've been watching this, let's uh, thank Sush for his time today on the episode and the value that he dropped. And I want to assure you that don't let the fact that your budget is limited um, and limit your potential to actually grow your nonprofit with uh, smart and effective and affordable marketing tactics. And like what Sush says, if nobody can hear about you, how are they going to donate uh, to you. So, you know what I mean? The world is changing at a faster, uh, speed. You also have to literally, um, you know, catch up with everybody else and market your business so that people get to know, like, and trust you. And that's the only way that you can get donations. Now, Sush, I can't thank you enough, my man, for the time that you spend with us on the, on the show today and the value that you dropped. Thanks for having me, Prosper. I really appreciate it. Fantastic. Yeah.